the Dwarf Labs telescope, the base model doesn't come with that, but if you buy the deluxe model, you get the filter um, holder and you get these neutral density filters. Now these are glass neutral density filters. They're, you know, the ND1 million uh, neutral density filters. So it's not the same as the um, kind of mylar aluminum film solar filter, but it does essentially the same job as it cuts the light down a lot. And you can argue back and forth about whether a neutral density or a, a film filter is better uh, optically, but they do the job very well. Now you do have to screw them into both the telephoto and the wide angle adapter. Typically, if you're using a lens, or sorry, a filter, like a dual band filter, an ultra high contrast, contrast filter at night, you would only use it in the telephoto lens. But here, because both of these cameras point up at the sun, you need to protect both cameras. And this is magnetically attaching to the dwarf. So unlike with the Sea Star, the dwarf is clutched and you can manually move these lenses, especially when it's turned off. You can just move it up, put this thing on. Um, I should mention that you cannot have this filter holder on when you're doing astro calibration because one of the calibration steps is it moves all the way down to the home position and so this thing will hit right there. So you have to put this filter on after you calibrate for um, astronomical things. But we're not needing to calibrate for solar observations, so we just put this on before before we leave the house. So, you know, even anytime this is going outside in the daytime for solar observations, I put this filter on just so that I never have to worry about maybe pointing this thing at the sun. All right, here's the dwarf outside. Pay no attention to the giant tripod and fancy adapters here. That's just for astronomical polar um, alignment. Um, all I really need to do is aim this in the general direction of the sun, and I'm trying to get the wide angle view um, at the general direction of the sun. And so I will go into the Dwarf Lab app. So, you know, here I have my Dwarf Lab app. And I hit connect. Connect to the camera. It will change the Wi Fi over to the Dwarf Lab. Now, the Dwarf app is in horizontal view, and in my widescreen view here, I can see the sun. So all I need to do is use the joystick to navigate that sun into the rectangle. Now, you'll notice there's four or five lens flares around the sun. So if you accidentally were to aim your... Uh, your telephoto lens at a lens flare, you can see it in the telephoto lens, but it's not going to image very well. So you really want to aim at the sun. Now, unfortunately, I have some pine tree branches right there. Um, now, we need to change the speed of the exposure time. I like doing like one two hundredth of a second. And then the gain should always be zero. And the IR you should cut. If you pass, it's going to get super bright. You'll need to make your you'll need to make your uh, exposure time much lower to get reasonable views. And it's all pink because of the IR light. So I usually almost always will cut the IR light out of that, um, and then I use about one two hundred, one three twenty, somewhere in that range. Now. Um, also, something I like to do is the auto white balance should be sunlight because, I mean, we're taking a video of the sun or a picture of the sun. So when I think it looks the best with the sunlight. And then it's not tracking the sun, so you might need to manually move and track. Now, if I take a photo here, you can see through those pine needles, those are the sunspots there, um, I can use the focus to fine tune that focus and try to get the fun, the sunspots in focus. So there, I think I've gone past back to, so I think that's about the best. Obviously the pine needles are not helping. Okay, I just moved my telescope two or three feet off to the right so it's not in the shadows there. Um, so if your sun image isn't perfectly centered, there's in the features under photo mode, you can do the track, highlight it, it'll track it and center it, so I like using that. And then if your dwarf is level, you can hit sun, and it will just basically try to track the sun. Um, so it's not perfect, but it keeps it mostly in the center. Now you can zoom in to get a better view. I'm going to turn off the 
feature view for that. It's still tracking the sun. You can see it's still there, but I'm gonna turn on the focus. Um, auto focus on the sun is probably going to be okay. You can see I have a lot of wind I'm dealing with here. Um, so that's auto focus on the sun. It worked all right. I'm gonna hit minus a few times. I got some clouds going in front there. Now I'm gonna hit plus a few times. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so now I'm just gonna take a couple of photos and there is some wind, so I'm gonna take a lot of photos just so I'll have enough to compare against here. And then I'll do a video. The wind just died down a little bit. Now, if you don't like this particular color temperature, you can change the white balance and that will affect what it looks like. You know, so there's incandescent light, for example, I don't recommend. Personally, I prefer the sunlight white balance. And you can also change your exposure time to get much brighter or dimmer. Now it looks like the sun is drifting slightly. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So I'm going to turn off the sun tracking, go to track, highlight this, center it back there, flip back over to sun tracking. Um, so, you know, the tracking isn't perfect. Um, it does an okay job keeping it in your view for quite a while. And if you want to stack, you can go to burst mode. Go to 93, confirm, hit the button. It's going to start bursting, and it takes 93 images all in a sequence, puts them in a burst directory. Um, so that makes it nice and easy if you want to stack the sun images. And at 1 200th of a second, it's basically the speed at which it can save it to the uh, flash drive or the micro SD card.